I'm excited to show you the application of this piece as I've recently learned some really good tips and tricks to make the cat plastic edges completely disappear. Firstly, I position the appliance over my knee and line it up. Next, I pull back one edge and apply a thin layer of Prusade adhesive on it. I'm careful to apply this just to the silicone edge and then extend it only one or two millimeters onto the cat plastic edge. If I glue down too much of that cat plastic, it makes it really hard to fully dissolve it, which will leave a different texture and shine around the edge of the appliance. And that took me a while to realize a lot of my earlier applications didn't look very good because I'd glued down too much cat plastic. So I wait for that adhesive to dry clear because it is prosate and then I'll carefully place it back down smoothing out the edges. You don't want the cat plastic to touch itself because the glue will obviously stick it together and ruin any chances of having a nice edge. Then I pulled back the middle section and I did the same and then the top section. So I've applied it this way because if I applied adhesive over the whole appliance at once it's a bit harder to handle it and not have it fold over and stick to itself as I try to position it down onto the skin. If I do it this way it's pretty foolproof to not mess up the application. Next I used some 99% isopropyl alcohol and a cotton tip to dissolve off the flashing first, which is that silicone edge around the border. Then I rolled the wet cotton tip away from the appliance to blend out and dissolve most of that cat plastic edge. Some of it was a little thicker than I wanted, especially the side lower down towards the table and the edges are a little shinier because of the cat plastic. So to both build up a better transition from the edge of the appliance to my skin and to give it a bit more of a skin texture and take away the shine, I am going to use a creamy prosade, which is a little thicker than regular prosade and a red stipple sponge. And I'm gonna stipple a thin layer fairly tightly over that edge. If you go too far out with this, it can create another weird texture in the skin that moves differently from the skin and from the appliance. Once that was dry, I applied an anti-shine cream over the edges to take away the prosade shine and to check that it was all blended nicely. I go back and use this anti-shine a few times over the application as it really helps to make the piece blend into my skin. I do notice with it mattified that some areas need a second coating of the creamy prosade just to get a better transition, so I apply that again and then put down some more anti-shine. Now to color this with alcohol activated palettes, the aim is to get it with as few colors and coats as possible so that our silicone color with the flocking still has that translucency to it, which makes it look more like real skin. I started with the Skin Illustrator Light Flesh Tones palette, getting the olive adjuster onto my medium stipple brush by Delium Tools. And I make sure this is quite diluted because I want really translucent washes of color and I stipple this over the silicone skin edges. Next, I use the Skin Illustrator Complexions palette and I do the same thing with the Cool Tone. Then I do this with the DT blush color. I can see I should have put a little more pinkness over the knee. Lastly, I go to a color that suits my skin really well, which is Paper Bark from the Bluebird Pale Skin Palette. For this application, I'm going to use a chip brush and splatter it across to get a more uniform coverage. You can also use an airbrush here. Next, I splat it on more cool tone and then splat it on the pastel yellow. Because the splatter got into the silicone wound center, I had to get some cotton tips and cotton pads with isopropyl alcohol on them just to take off that splatter where I want the silicone paint job to show through. And then I put down some more anti-shine. Next, I used a couple of the pinks from the Complexions palette to try to mimic a scratch that went under the top of the silicone prosthetic so that it goes on top of the prosthetic, making it appear to just be part of my skin. Using a couple of the pinks mixed up from the Complexions palette, I went around the outside of the wound to try and add some more irritation and pinkness, which is called erythema in medical terms, if you want to look up any reference images. Then using the Skin Illustrator Glazing Spray in Blue Bruce, I added this bluish infected color around the top and side of the wound. I like the glazing gels and sprays because they sink into the skin and they're prosthetic to look like they're under the skin rather than pigment sitting on top. It's kind of like a stain. Next I added some glazing gels in bruise red and deep purple. This is to get that kind of infected look under the skin. Then I noticed my edge still had a little lip to it in certain light. So I added another prosade layer over it. 
So really, whenever you catch an edge that needs working on, you can just keep adding prose to, to make it the best edge possible. Then I added Fleet Street scab paste into the bottom corner of the wound and spread it out with a wet cotton tip. Next I added even more anti-shine because that fresh layer of prosade needed to be mattified. Now I'm using Fleet Street Dark Drying Blood. I'm going to apply it just messily around the place, let it dry for a minute and then wipe most of it away. I want the impression that a nurse has cleaned this wound and there's just remnants and traces of blood left on the skin. I used a wet cotton pad and cotton tip to take back the blood. I also noticed here that I didn't leave the blood long enough to dry because it was transferring all over my skin and leaving the skin a bit more orange, which then threw off my color matching a little bit. So I added a little bit back on and then removed bits of it again until I'm happy with it looking more natural and less placed. I put a little bit of KY Jelly over the pussy parts of the wound to make that look a bit wetter and goopier. I went back around the skin with a clean brush with isopropyl alcohol on it to try and blend out the color a bit more. So using the isopropyl alcohol on the skin and also when I used the water and cotton pads to wipe the blood, it actually wiped off a lot of the anti-shine so I had to put a bit more anti-shine on now. I stopped filming here to take photos, but then I wanted to fluff around with the color a little bit because I saw in the photographs it still wasn't completely spot on. This turned into like probably 15 minutes of adding and taking back colors and then the white background changes the white balance in this a little bit. So it looks a little bit different here. Um, the skin did end up a little bit pinker than it was before. Now the silicone is pretty hardy. You can press it and play with it and it will go back to its original shape. I can stitch up this one, but if you wanted it to be a fairly heavy duty stitch job and last through lots of movement or in really large pieces, you should put something like hair lace into the silicone so there's more of an internal structure for the, for the stitches to grip onto. Also, obviously the needle is designed to easily pierce through skin, so I'm very much aware of what parts of the silicone prosthetic are there and where my skin starts, so I can safely stitch through just the top of the silicone. If you were gonna try to copy this, only do it if you are 100% sure that you can pull it off safely. It involves a lot of observation and knowing what you are doing, and if you aren't 100% comfortable and thinking that you have that, then don't attempt it. Don't turn fake wounds into real wounds. Also, I had a lot of fun removing the stitches and the staples from the wound. Now to remove this, I prefer using a remover called Super Solve by PPI. So I get that onto a cotton tip and then I find the loosest edge and I work the cotton tip underneath it. Once I have lifted enough of the appliance up, I switch to a cotton pad with Super Solve on it and keep working the prosthetic slowly off the skin. There's always gonna be a layer of prosade left on the skin, pretty much guaranteed. So I go back over the skin a few times with cotton pads and Super Solve to get off any leftover adhesive. It's also a good idea to moisturize your skin after you put it through this process because it can be quite drying. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this. I was very excited to share all the new tips and tricks I have acquired to take encapsulated silicone appliances to the next level. And if you want updates when new videos are released, subscribe to my channel here and turn on the notifications. I will see you guys in the next video.